Hello there, I'm Dark Shades and I just want to thank you all for your likes and your subscribers and your shares. I, I really, really appreciate it. I'm Dark Shades. I hail from the east of England. I talk about things that hopefully will help you feel a bit better about your circumstances. And today I wanted to talk about united by circumstances but divided by thought. And I'm going to read from my notes because I woke up with this kind of an inspiration to share it. I'm not quite sure where I'm going with it. I just literally wrote out the thoughts. And I'm hoping that by sharing them with you, it will resonate with someone out there and make somebody feel better about what's going on at the moment. So the first thing I came across was this saying by Marilyn Ferguson. And she says, Change inner attitudes of your mind and you will change outer aspects of your lives. And that is so true because a lot of times the way we think affects the way we feel. And I don't know how many of you have been feeling really kind of anxious. And then when you feel anxious, you don't do things right. The other day I discovered that I had um, authorised something on my credit card that I wasn't supposed to authorise and I panicked and as much as I do counselling and as much as I talk to you guys I am just as guilty as you are of losing it and getting worried and not knowing what to do next and getting all flustered and I needed to call the bank and let them know that I shouldn't have authorised a transaction and I was trying to call the um, number and I was, instead of swiping up, I was going across and I couldn't, um, I didn't, ha I hadn't written down the number and I'm thinking, man, why are you panicking? Why don't you just calm down? And as soon as I spoke to myself in that way, I calmed down, I was able to make the call unflustered. We need to change what we're thinking because we're no good when we panic. So that's the first thing. Never before have we all had so much in common. And that is because we're all under lockdown. We're all uncertain about our future or the majority of us are. Um, what's happening now is accentuating our emotions. We're all feeling an element of fear. We all like to resist control because we just feel as though we're losing control. So we tend to resist the control that's being imposed on us. We're all apprehensive about outcomes of what's going on, whether it's apprehensive about the outcome of the vaccination, the outcome of the lockdown, um, the outcome of what's going to happen to our jobs. Will we ever get back to where we were before? We're all apprehensive about that. And we all feel uncomfortable about losing control over our circumstances. So that's what we've all got in common. So we're united in that way by our circumstances. So many of us feel obliged to do what's best for the family, for friends, for colleagues and strangers by wearing masks, social distancing and improving hygiene habits. That's an act of selflessness. But for once, for a long, long time, we are being forced to care about other people. And yes, there might be a selfish motive. The selfish motive would be, oh, I'm doing this because I just want things to get back to normal. But in doing that, in complying, you are actually thinking in your head, I need to protect other people as well as myself. And that is a form of selflessness. And that is what COVID-19 is doing, is forcing us to be selfless. Even if it's against our will, a lot of us are being selfless. We're thinking about the other person over and above our wants and needs. Our wants are to damn everything, go out, do what we want, go to the pub, you know, go mix up with crowds or whatever it is you want to do. That is what your instinct is telling you. But your selflessness and because you want all of this to be over 
you're holding back your own needs. And you're actually saying, look, my needs are not as important as protecting other people. So, COVID-19, as much as we don't like it, it discourages selflessness through compliance, but it encourages fear through uncertainty. Um, so, a lot of us, we want things to go back to normal, but what is normal now? They call it the new normal. What does the new normal look like? What will it look like? Will we want to um, be in billowing groups? Will we want to be surrounded by thousands and thousands of people? Knowing that anyone could have anything. Okay, we're talking about the coronavirus now, but when you think about it, you don't know what people have. So will people now be cautious about getting into large groups? Or will, like a lot of it's human nature, we forget, once we get over it, forget the past, and it's as though it didn't happen. And so everybody falls back into their billowing groups, and everybody, everything is hunky-dory. So um, a lot of us are choosing isolation over togetherness, because some of us think, it's too much hassle to have to cater someone else's needs as well as their own during a time when funds are limited, resources are limited. People are kind of saying, look, I'm going to do bad all by myself. And that's why we've seen an influx in the breakup of relationships. Um, so is this about selfishness or is it about selflessness? Selfish? Well, a lot of us, we didn't want to socialise anyway. If, if truth be known, sometimes we do things because we feel we have to, to be polite, you know, be a part of the team. That's what, this is how we've been conditioned. But is that really what we wanted to do? Did we really want to go and meet up with mates after work when you're bloody tired and you want to go home? Do you really want to enjoy the massive Christmas parties? that cost you an arm and a leg. A lot of people didn't really want to do that, but they did it because they feel obliged to. So now we don't have to socialise. Well, we can't socialise. We don't have to smile at anyone because we've got a mask. A lot of times you see people, you feel forced to smile at them because they're looking at you and you don't want to feel hostile or you don't want to look as though you're... Um, rejecting them so you smile you smile as a form of habit as opposed to a genuine um, salutation or a genuine greeting I mean a lot of us we do one sec I forgot I put something on the fire Yes, yeah, so a lot of us, apologies for that. So a lot of us, um, we smile because we feel we have to. With a mask, you don't have to smile. You can be selfish. You can think, oh, I'm not going to smile. I don't have to smile. And you don't have to interact. All of these times when you used to have all these conversations and people hugging people and they don't want to hug them and they feel as though they've got to have them, especially in work situations, you don't have to bother with that. You know, so there's no pretense. And it's all under the guise of COVID-19 and protecting yourself. Conversely, you have the selflessness, which is, I want to, but I can't. And I don't want to be responsible for somebody else getting the virus or being harmed in any way. So you have those who really would love to participate and smile and interact and socialize but they feel responsible for the lives of other people so they don't so that is a selfless act as opposed to a selfish act so what is the pandemic teaching us it's teaching us to look at our options to seek alternative ways to survive uh, that nothing is certain that we must plan for uncertainty that we have limited control and it encourages us to prioritise. 
It also forces us to build resilience against fear and anxiety because if we don't, we all end up needing therapy or going off the rails or literally just packing in. Leaning towards addictions and all sorts, being overly emotional. So we need to build up that resilience and the COVID, the um, lockdown is forcing us to build up our resilience, whichever way that is, eating healthily, sleeping as best as you possibly can, planning ahead so you are not caught by surprise, looking at the worst case scenario and mitigating your circumstances against it. So it's okay to feel vulnerable and it's okay to feel indecisive. And so, um, so don't beat yourself up because you're feeling anxious and frustrated and worried. Just like grief, just accept it. And this is, we are all going through a grieving process. We, I mean, when you think about it, we are losing a hell of a lot. And the five cycles of um, the grief process by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross is, I'm not quite sure what order they are, but it is anger. That is the anger that we're losing our freedom. We're losing our jobs. Um, we can't go out. Um, and then it leads to denial. This can't be happening. Is it really happening? And then you go to bargaining. Oh, my God, can I do anything? I'll do anything to get a job. I'll do anything to turn things around. And that's why um, we're all wearing masks and we're all um, complying because we've reached the bargaining stage. And then maybe by next month, the month after, we'll reach a stage of acceptance. This is how it's going to be. This is what it is. This is what we have to do. And so we are all going through that bereavement cycle of losing the way we used to live and adapting to a new way of living. So how can we build resilience against the unknown? Number one, we have to accept that we're anxious and it's okay. Remember that we're all going through similar emotions, so share your concerns with others because they will understand this is the one time when somebody else will understand what you're going through. Yes, we all have different levels, but we are all anxious. We are all concerned. We are all likely to feel fragile for a while until we, we regain a sense of control. Ask yourself, what is making you feel fragile the most? Is there anything you can do about it? Or is it just your thoughts spiraling out of control? Because that's what sometimes can happen. We can think of the worst case scenario. And um, somebody called me um, yesterday and they were crying. And I said, what's the matter? And they said, oh, my best friend has got the coronavirus has been tested positive for the coronavirus. And I said, you know, but what? Why are you so upset? Oh, because she's got underlying symptoms and she could die. So because of the way she was thinking meant her emotions were heightened. And I had to say to her, there's lots of people that have been tested positive with the coronavirus, who have underlying symptoms yet still survive. Just try to think of the best case scenario, that she will survive. And she seemed to calm down a little bit. And then I thought about it and I thought, that crying was really quite intense. So I called her back and I said, is there anything else about what's happened in that situation that you are really scared about? And she said, well, she came to see me. Um, but she was outside my front door. And even though she didn't have a mask, we were two metres apart. But she came to deliver something and I should be OK. So then it then becomes, you know, when you know someone at the moment, for those of us who do not know people with COVID, it seems like something is very, very distant. 
But it starts when you start realizing that somebody you know has been tested positive with COVID, all of a sudden the reality hits you and you're like, it kind of reminds you of your own mortality because then you start thinking, I wonder if I can catch it. I wonder if I'm going to die. And that is what causes the fear. That is what causes the anxiety. But we have to remember, God forbid, if we do have it, what can we do? We have to build up resilience. We have to eat healthily. We have to sleep well. We have to try to eliminate stress. Because all of, if you don't, all of that is going to make your circumstances worse. And the worst case scenario will manifest itself. So what they say, if you can't change it, don't worry about it. Just accept it and in a calm and measured manner. See what you can do to kind of shield yourself from um, getting any worse from it. So um, living alone is an opportunity to embrace serenity instead of feeling anxious and worried and thinking, oh my God, I'm on my own. This is the worst thing that could ever happen, especially during lockdown. That kind of stress will lower your immune system. Embrace the serenity. Embrace the fact that you do not have somebody nagging in your ears. Sometimes you might even say, I wish I did have somebody nagging in my ears. But if you don't, try to accept your situation and say, OK, I'll make more calls now. I'm going to call my family members. I'm going to call a couple of colleagues. I'm going to call someone. Even if you have to call the Samaritans, you speak to someone. But try to lift your spirits and build up your resilience. Your resilience is so important now. If you're living together, and the other person is getting on your nerves, increase your tolerance, increase your flexibility, try to accept each other's indiscretions, come to some kind of agreement. You know, you could two of you sit together, say, look, we need to set time to aside to talk. I notice that we've been arguing more and I notice that we've been getting on each other's nerves. During this time, we need to pull together. We need to minimise arguments. What is it that we can do to kind of make this relationship better? And just discuss what is in a nice, calm and gentle way. Just discuss the things that are irritating both of you and see what you can do about it. Be a bit more compassionate and understanding. And just because this is about the both of you, this is about you becoming calmer and it's about your well-being improving your sense of well-being and you cannot improve your sense of well-being if you're always arguing and bickering and the other person's getting on your nerves so have a discussion and see what you can do to smooth things out even if you say look during this period while we're on lockdown let's just see what we can do to get through this period and then if we if we find that we can't do it afterwards then so be it but just for now we need to do it for our sense of self and our sense of well-being and to eliminate stress or reduce stress. So, yeah, so be open about fears and insecurities. And like I said, make an agreement to be more compassionate, empathetic and considerate. Imagine what you're fearing is far away. Like we all imagine the worst. I'm, we are already thinking, my God, you know, I can't pay my mortgage. I can't, you know, I might get kicked out of my home. I've got no food in the cupboard. Pretend it's, look at it from a distance. It's happening now, but just look at it for a distance. What can you do now to make that situation easier or to push it further away? Think about what you can do. When you're in, when you've got your back against the wall, that's when people are creative. When you are, when things are just coming easily, you don't engage your brain. So this is the perfect opportunity, opportunity when you're feeling fragile and overwhelmed to just step back a little bit and try to think of what you can do to improve your situation. And just push it 
mentally and visually further away so that you can actually see it from an objective standpoint and work out what you can do to mitigate it coming at you too quickly. Um, it's called strategic planning or mitigating against disaster. Recognize your fears, accept them. I say a daily mantra because every now and then I kind of hyperventilate. Something might happen and I'm like, oh my God, like the other day when I heard that they were vaccinating all the over all the over 60s. And I'm like thinking, oh, it's a ploy to get us out. It's a ploy to kill us. But, you know, all this depopulation stuff. And I'm over 60 and all this kind of stuff. And I, and I started getting nervous and I had a really restless night because I said, you know, the over 60s, while, you know, a lot of us look good for our age, there are some who um, are quite fragile. And then they're talking about those with the, you know, low immune systems. They're going to give it to them. And I'm thinking, you know, that's just going to kill them off. And so I started becoming anxious and I had to start saying a mantra. Breathe in faith, exhale fear. Inhale faith, exhale fear. And I had to keep repeating it, repeating it, repeating it until I had a sense of calm. Sometimes we have to change our thoughts. We can't live in fear. It's demobilizing. It's, dis it's unstable. So um, when we think prospect, nothing is certain. So we, we have to increase our gratitude, we, you know, because we don't know what's happening. Think about what you've got today, what you can do today. And Treat it with gratitude. Appreciate those people you can see today because maybe tomorrow you won't be able to see them. Maybe there's going to be this level four, level five, tier, tier, tier four, tier five lockdown. We're not even going to be able to go out of our front doors. So appreciate those you have around you now. And uh, write down options and alternatives. Might not be able to think of any now, but just write down one. And then what will happen during the day is that you'll think of more things. And as you think of more things, you write them down. It's just about taking that first step. Take that first step in trying to eliminate um, the negative and think about the positive. What can I do? And what are the alternatives? What are my options? Like I said, our thoughts might be different, but our need to survive is the same. The more clear our contingency plan, the less anxious and paranoid we'll become. So when you're putting out your, your options and alternatives, that's like having a contingency plan. When you have a contingency plan, you have a, a, a better sense of security. I'm not going to say all your worries are going to disappear, but there'll be less. As humans, we react to present danger instead of responding to it. We need to learn from the Eastern culture. They are very, um, I'm not saying all of them, but they have this sense of discipline and emotional intelligence. They can kind of cut off their emotions and get the job done. But for the most of us, we haven't learned that. We haven't learned that. So we need to control and gauge our emotions so that we can be more resilient and respond better to this situation. And I hope this is helpful. Bye bye.